All right, hello everybody. I am Andrew McConville and I'm a designer, an artist, a coder, a maker, but more specifically, I create interfaces. And so before we take a look at those interfaces, it's worth sharing my academic journey. It's been a mix of visual design, programming, user experience research, and now studio art. And I feel this interdisciplinary approach was a requirement for me that enabled me to build prototypes myself. So this kind of avoided me having to be subject to relying to somebody else to build it for me and carry out my vision. And second, to test my prototypes so that I can solicit feedback firsthand to hear and see how people respond to my work. And so we will take a quick trip through my design practice as a user experience designer before getting into my studio art practice. This is one of the first projects I consider to be my first truly interactive work. Before this, most of my work was building static marketing sites. But here is a degree planner that I worked on as an undergrad for about two years from 2011 to 2013. And one of the most exciting parts here is that the iPad had just been released the year before in 2010. And so this is a web application specifically designed to run on desktop with a mouse, but also on a tablet via touch. And so here we see an interface that is broken up into semesters and students can drag and drop courses between semesters. They can add a new semester. They can then add classes from the catalog to that newly created semester. And once they're done with that, they can maybe tweak their grades to see how uh, that could affect their GPA. Up at the top, they can see their overall progress. And then inside of that, they can see progress within each specific degree requirement. And so this prototype, um, I started to pitch it as a startup and I entered it into UWM's newly created at the time student startup challenge and it won. So that was super exciting. And so here's another interactive work that I did this time for Pearson Publishing, one of the largest textbook publishers in the U.S. I worked on this from 2011 to 2013, and it is an interactive textbook that I worked on with the author, Ann Wazaki. This is a project that reimagines her physical textbook into an interactive iPad web app. And so in this specific chapter, students evaluate the credibility and relevance of sources. So we here we see a peer reviewed journal. Here is a Wikipedia article and students can then drag some of those sources to create a works cited page and then they get feedback. They get audio narrated feedback on the choices that they made. And so again, super fun because the iPad was so new at this time and this um, project has audio, video, and a bunch of mini games, which is also super fun. So highly interactive. Here is the latest web app project that I have been a part of for the past 11 years. This is Aculinx. It's a software startup that I joined as a user experience engineer. And what you're seeing here are a handful of interface components. So early in my career at Aculinx, I spent a lot of time designing and building reusable components for our design system. And so lots of buttons and lists and form elements and tables and even a few data visualizations. So definitely not the flashiest work. But we do have a slide, and when I first started at Aculinx, we were just a handful of people in a strip mall with all of our desks pushed together. But later, when we got a real office, we also got a slide because that's the kind of goofy stuff tech companies do. And so this is where software is made, but this is how software is made and what software design looks like. And you'll notice there are no computers in this room. This is because a lot of time spent by a product designer is used to get people together and gather knowledge and be a, a facilitator of ideation. But yes, I do eventually spend time designing and building prototypes on the computer. And then we take those prototypes that we've built and show them to more people to get yet even more feedback. And so I have spent a lot of time designing for the computer screen. And after a while, I started to feel like everything I was doing had a sameness to it. Everything I was doing was it was on a screen and every experience was stuck behind glass. And I missed the physics of, you know, the real world, like sound and touch and the senses, but also our relationship to physical objects and how they move through real physical space. And so my art practice engages the human body, um, you know, through physical interfaces. And so here is the toggle keyboard that I did in 2021. It's made from 3D printed plastic and toggle switches that can be flipped on or off to trigger a character, just like a regular keyboard. 
and it does indeed function the toggle switches are wired up to an arduino which is this tiny little green computer seen here and then that plugs into a laptop or a desktop with a usb cable just like a keyboard would and given that we just talked about my background in ux design yes i tested this uh piece the usability of it and the feedback that i got was that it was uncomfortable and it was horrible to type on which you might expect and so why would i make such a thing well design uh, specifically software design pushes the designer into a highly focused direction People are paying you to solve a very specific problem, to solve their very specific problem. And they aren't very interested in your research and the discoveries that you make along the way. But with my art practice, there's room to iterate and there's room with each iteration to make discoveries and then to follow those discoveries and go off in new directions. And what I discovered with this keyboard was that right, replacing the buttons with those little toggle switches is that the user's input slows down, which you might expect, but also this mode of input dramatically changes how the user physically and mentally engages with the act of writing. So those little toggle switches quickly become uncomfortable. And in that short amount of time, you begin to resist the urge to type. You don't want to use this device. But when you do go to use it, you make sure you have a well thought out idea. And this is important to mention because our tools like keyboards or hammers or even language, they all shape our perception of what's possible. And the tools we have influence how we approach problem solving. So how we design the interface will influence what we create with it. Here is yet another keyboard. This is the linear keyboard that I did in 2022. It uses an Arduino and servos to depress its 26 keys. It's made from anodized extruded aluminum, 3D printed PLA, wire, and PCB. And my goal here was to separate the human presence from the human act of typing. So after doing the previous work, the toggle keyboard, I wanted to emphasize and amplify and even isolate the act of typing, which is a very human specific activity. It's something that we do. And so what would it mean to disrupt this relationship that we have with the keyboard? So let's take a quick look at some process for getting there. My work typically starts with sketches and arranging parts. And so if I'm going to remove the person from the keyboard, how will it type? I needed a structure to hold those components. So here I'm using Rhino 3D to 3D print a structure for it. And that brings us to the first prototype proof of concept. And with that one functioning, it's time to scale it up to three keys. And this is where things get unexpected. I showed this to several people and what I got was that it was uncanny and unsettling in its motion. That noise is sharp and piercing and aggressive. And I was also very surprised by the sound. I did not expect the sound to, to kind of fill the room the way it was. And so I actually spent a few weeks trying to get rid of it. But here's another iteration. So I had three keys. So we had to scale it up to six keys. And then here's me wondering about, well, what form should this thing take? So I'm scrunching the layout of a normal keyboard down into a linear orientation. A few more um, potential layouts, some in Illustrator, some sketches by hand. And this one is a funky one. It is a technical execution here. I'm just wiring up uh, 27 of these to see, can I do that? Can I make 27 work? And this is the most current version. It's doing what we do. It's typing. And this presents the viewer with a sudden and unexpected confrontation with their relationship with technology. Here is the keyboard engaging in the human activity of typing, yet there is no human present. And so I've received lots of feedback on this piece over time. Um, lots of people go from anywhere from it's a self-portrait of, of most of us humans, myself included. Um, perhaps it's a device for the blind could be commentary on workplace dystopia. It is sublimely hypnotizing and just fun to watch. Yes, I agree with that. And a lot of people do say it is effective with how uncanny and creepy it can feel. And I do get there's some affect there. It is, you know, when you kind of look at it, it makes you think about, oh my gosh, AI takeover, robots are gonna take over the world. I do get that. I don't really feel that so much with this piece, but I definitely do get that. And so this is a work called 
communication. It is inspired by the seven segment character display like those found on a digital clock, such as one that might be on your microwave, where each number is made from seven individual line segments that come together to form the different numbers. And this work is comprised of 16 segments instead of seven, so that I can create both numbers and letters with it. But in this picture, the lines for each segment are not present. And so this is made from anodized extruded aluminum and 3D printed PLA. It moves via stepper motors, belts, springs, and bearings. And it is controlled by an Arduino and four stepper motor drivers. Here are a few iterations and prototypes of the cam system that I designed in all my work. I love building prototype after prototype. And so here it is in motion. And I should say, aside from the seven segment display, it is also inspired by internet chat, specifically Twitch chat. And so when there are tens or even hundreds of thousands of people sending messages in chat, the messages go by so fast that the contribution of any one message often goes unnoticed. But there's an overall rhythm to the chat. The chat becomes the focal point more so than any one specific message. And so this work is powered by that undulating rhythm of the chat. The piece transfers the discourse of the digital chat room into our physical space, and it produces sound and dynamic movement and a visual, visual performance powered by humans communicating. And I consider this piece to be almost finished, but I have one more version that I want to create where I'll, I'll focus on being a little bit more purposeful with the Arduino and the wiring. And so that is a wrap, and thank you to everyone for listening to my artist talk.